Hi there, it's Asiem. I've achieved 8.5 in IELTS reading and 8.5 in my IELTS overall. And I've taken both computer-based and paper-based versions of the exam. In this video, I want to share my strategies, talk about the most difficult types of tasks and just little tips you should know. Okay, let's get started! First of all, let's talk about the exam format. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. IELTS reading lasts for 60 minutes and includes 40 questions. The tests for academic and general training students are slightly different. Academic students get academic scientific texts. General training students get some general texts, such as instructions, and then something more academic at the end. Each test consists of three sections, but for academic students there will be one long passage per section, three passages in total. For general training students, usually there are two passages in the first section, two in the second, one in the third, five passages in total. Overall, questions for general training students are slightly easier and you will be required to answer more questions correctly in order to achieve a certain score. I've actually found a detailed table that shows you what score you're gonna get with every number of correct answers. So here it is. If you answer 30 questions correctly, it's enough to get band 7 in IELTS Academic, but in IELTS General Training you will only get band 6. And will actually be required to answer 34 questions to get band 7. I got 8.5 in the academic test, which means that I answered 37 or 38 questions correctly. And indeed, I couldn't find several answers. In the general training test, I would only be allowed to make one mistake to achieve the same score. And you need no mistakes at all to achieve the top score in the general training test, but can get one question wrong in the academic test. Now let me share with you my strategy. When you open IELTS reading tasks, the progression from simple questions to the most difficult is very noticeable. The further you go, the more difficult questions become. That means that you should go through easy questions quite quickly to save more time to find answers to the more difficult ones. And if you open IELTS Academic, the instructions are spent about 20 minutes on each section. I would say that's definitely not the best time allocation. I recommend spending about 15 minutes on the first passage, 20 on the second and 25 on the third, because the first one is quite easy, you can do it in 15 minutes, but there is no way you can do the third one in 20 minutes. You need more time. Actually, I go through the questions even more quickly. I spend about 12 minutes on the first one, 15 on the second, 20 on the third, and then I come back to questions I couldn't answer. Yes, when I can't find a certain question, I don't know what the answer is, I can't find it, I just don't understand the answer. I leave it and I move on. Because you give yourself the best chance to answer as many questions as possible if you don't spend too much time on any single one. Mark them to review, you will come back to them if you have some time left. Remember that in IELTS reading, you don't have extra time to transfer your answers. If you take a paper-based exam, you'll be marking your answers on the question sheets. You should do that, that's better. But then you've answered the first section, transfer your answers. Answer the second, transfer your answers. During the third one, when the examiner says you have five minutes left, whatever you're doing, stop, transfer all your answers, apart from the questions you want to review, and then resume what you wanted to do. The worst mistake is when people just don't have time to mark answers they've already found. I saw this happening during the Rio exam. Don't repeat this mistake. 
in a computer-based exam. You simply select your answers and you don't need to transfer them anywhere. I would say that saves you two or three minutes of your time. But actually my point is go through the questions quite quickly. Don't stop on those you can't find. Come back to them later. Next. In IELTS reading, I never read the whole passage in one go. I base all my strategy on questions. And actually, many questions come in order. It means you can read the first question, then you start scanning, quickly reading your passage until you feel that the answer is somewhere here. Then you slow down, perhaps you reread the question, you reread the sentence, you find the answer. Then you read the second question and you resume quickly scanning through the passage until you find the second answer and so on. And it just saves a lot of time. If you read the whole passage, quite likely you will not memorize all the details to give correct answers. And also you will not know which details you need to memorize, so you will spend a lot of time reading. I've done some research into which question types come in order and which don't. I have a detailed video that I'm going to link in the description. But in short, here is what I found. Let me tell you which question types come in order. Well, first of all, missing words, where the task is choose one word or choose not more than two words from the passage for each answer. Those come in order. The next question type is true, false, not given. I think it's one of the most complex tasks in IELTS reading. And there is another similar one, yes, no, not given. Uh, those questions come in order apart from the situation where you get a set of yes, no, not given questions at the end of the third section of your test. In this case, perhaps they're not in order, but in other cases they are. Also, multiple choice, where you need to select one option out of four, or maybe two options out of six or seven. Of course, there are questions which don't come in order, typically all matching questions, such as matching headings. That's where the task is to choose the correct heading for each paragraph from the list of headings below. In this case, you should read the first paragraph, find the answer, read the second paragraph, find the answer, and so on. So you base your strategy on reading paragraphs one by one, rather than reading questions and looking for the paragraph with the answer. There is another similar type of task called matching paragraphs. The task here is which paragraph contains the following information. So they're slightly different. In matching headings, you're asked about the general idea in the paragraph. In matching paragraphs, you are asked about a certain bit of the text mentioned in the paragraph. It may be just several words, not the whole paragraph. So I think it's a little bit more difficult to find because you need to be more attentive. But again, the strategy is the same and questions don't come in order. And you might also get questions where you need to match sentence endings. The task is complete each sentence with the correct ending. All these questions don't come in order. What's more, at the end of the third section, you get a set of questions which don't come in order. Those are the most difficult ones and that's where I typically just can't find one or two answers. And that's why my score is 8.5 and not a nine yet. Most other types of questions come in order. And of course you should take practice tests in order to learn which come in order and which don't and you need to have a clear strategy for each type of task so that when you see it, you know straight away what you're supposed to do. 
and how you're gonna look for your answers. So let's talk about some of them. You should learn about different types of tasks in IELTS reading and have a strategy for each of them so that when you get one during the exam, you know straight away what you're gonna do and you don't waste time on figuring out what the task is. There are a number of official free practice tests available. They all are linked in my study plan in the description box below. In IELTS reading, texts are tough and most likely you will not be able to understand everything. So you should really concentrate on looking for those answers and not get distracted on words you don't know. To do that, pay attention to keywords. When you read the question, identify keywords. They will help you to keep yourself concentrated on what you're looking for. Highlight those keywords. If you take a paper-based exam, just underline them with your pencil. If you take a computer-based exam, you can highlight them, select the word, click on the right button on your mouse, select highlight, and the word will be yellow. When you read the text, also highlight the key information, such as dates, names, names of theories, names of places and people, um, there will be questions about them and you will be able to quickly find them in the text if you highlight them. You know, in IELTS, answers to most questions lie in several words. You don't need to understand everything. You just need to find those words. And that's where keywords help. But also remember that the correct option and the words in the text will be paraphrased. They will not be repeated. But when you look at the meaning, the meaning is the same. But sometimes you may find words in the text and the same words in one of the options. Most likely, this is not the correct option. This is a trap. So check the meaning. Let me compare the paper-based and computer-based versions of IELTS reading and give you some extra tips. First of all, don't forget that you don't get any extra time to transfer your answers. You must do everything in 60 minutes. And you need time for that if you take the paper-based version of the exam. You also have to manage your time more carefully in this version because invigilators tell you when you have two minutes left, five minutes left, and I don't remember if they tell you when you have 10 minutes left, but nothing else. So if you take the paper-based exam, when the reading section starts, look at the clock on the wall and write down the time when it starts. You may forget it later, but you will, in this way, you will always be able to figure out how much time you have left. In a computer-based exam, it's easier because you have a timer on your screen. The only thing you don't know is how many seconds you have in the last minute. You will see one minute and then the test is over, but you don't need to transfer your answers anywhere. In both versions, you can either underline words on the question sheets or you can highlight them. In a computer-based IELTS, you can also copy-paste words. Press Ctrl-C to copy a word and Ctrl-V to paste it. That's very convenient when you need to find some words and fill the gaps. In a paper-based version, you have to copy words yourself. Be careful about the spelling because spelling matters. In both versions of the exam, you can write all your answers in capital letters, if you wish. You can use caps lock on the keyboard. And if your handwriting is a bit difficult, try to write your answers in capital letters because examiners should be able to read them. I actually think that the computer-based version of IELTS reading is more convenient because you have a big screen and you can see almost all the passage and questions at the same time. In a paper-based exam, you have to turn pages and also you have to copy your answers. 
but of course it's up to you. And before taking the computer-based exam, you must learn the interface. IDP offers the full IELTS reading test and the format is exactly like the real one. It's linked in the IELTS study plan in the description box below. You know, in my most recent exam, I had two sets of matching headings, one set of matching paragraphs and three sets of true, false, not given, or yes, no, not given. Basically, I had them in each section of my exam, and I think you should really pay attention to those two types of tasks. Of course, don't forget to take the official practice tests. They all are linked in my IELTS study plan, and I have separate videos about those types of tasks too. Thank you for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye.